up on the agenda is adding of kiosks for bike rentals at South Peabody, Greenway, Crystal Lake, and downtown area. I believe we have community development, Mr. Kurt Bransfield, and Rec Parks and Recreation, Ms. Jen Davis. You're welcome to come up and let's start the ball. Thank you. Hello? Oh, there we go. Hi. This way, okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, awesome. Um, well, we're wondering what your questions are, what you're um, wanting from us. Um, we've done a little bit of research on our own um, to find out what other communities are doing, what are the companies are out there. Um, and I have information on Zagster Bike Share, um, and Kurt has information from the MAPC. Is yep. that right? So we can go through what we've found so far if that's what you're looking for. Okay, if I can just introduce that. Councillor Turco, I believe this was a motion that came from you in October of the last session. If you'd like to take Mr. that. Mr. Chairman, through you to uh, Ms. Davis and Mr. Bellavance. Um, yes, I filed a motion several months ago and it was uh, more in line with the bike trail, um, as you see, we, you know, as you know, we're, we're going to extend the bike trail um, in the future and probably even further down the road. And I thought it would be a convenience to the residents of Peabody, uh, not only through use on the bike trail, but also um, in the downtown area. As you see, we, you know, we have a lot of major development going on in the downtown, and, and with residents become the need for transportation. Um, and I thought it would be a good thing to investigate as far as putting the, the kiosks in, so I wanted some further information on whether this was doable and um, there was any profit to the city and where we go from here. What you found out with the MAPC? Uh, Carp Elevance, uh, for the record. Um, just wanted to uh, let you know that there was a meeting with the uh, MAPC. Uh, they have what's called the North Shore Task Force, so it's the um, communities because MAPC is so large that they break it down into uh, uh, subregions. So the North Shore Task Force met, I'm going to say probably about that time, October or so, uh, where um, Salem had already entered into an agreement with Zagster. Uh, they got sponsorships uh, for the kiosk stations. Um, Beverly at that time was looking into that as well. Um, they were asking about costs and things like that. Um, and then. I kind of mentioned as well that Peabody, you know, we were thinking about that and that was something we would be interested in. Um, what they said was, at that point we said, well, it's, is there any way to share so that people can go from Peabody to Salem to Beverly or Beverly to Peabody or Salem and, and, and vice versa. Uh, so MAPC was going to get some information uh, that they haven't met back again. So for, for my sake, I was waiting for them to get basically hold another meeting and get more information to be presented to us. But in the meantime, I, I know Jen had looked into uh, Zagster, and I did ta talk to uh, Councilor Turco about another company, OFO, uh, that is run out of uh, Revere. So right now, uh, from our perspective, we're gathering information uh, to see how feasible uh, that is and what costs would be and the different companies that would offer that service. Thank you. And, and just... Mr. Mr. Chairman, through you um, to the council, OFO was uh, the one that I looked into in Revere, and what OFO is is uh, rather than bike kiosks, it's a uh, freestanding bikes that operate through an app on the phone, whether it be an iPhone or a, um, you know a Google phone, and the bikes have uh, magnetic locks on the wheels, and they're freestanding. They don't have a kiosk or anything like that. Um, they're designated places within the city that they can be placed. And a resident would go in with their, their app and open it up and it would be a dollar an hour. Um, and OFO contacted the city of Revere and, and asked them if they could do a four month trial. They did the same in Malden and Everett. They like to stay in surrounding communities. Um, to your point, Kurt, so that, um, you know, if there is transportation back and forth to different cities and the bikes are left in locations, they have a deal with multiple cities. So when I spoke to the Community Development Department in Revere, they were extremely happy with the, uh, the four months that they had with it. They liked the freestanding um, aspect rather than having to set up kiosks that needed to be removed um, you know, with the seasons. And they, 
they worked out some kinks. One, one of the issues that they came across was um, the deal with OFO was that the bikes would be picked up. They have a GPS tracker on them. Um, if they were left in a location for longer than 24 hours, they would be picked up and brought back to the designated spot that they were uh, supposed to be at. And they found that OFO wasn't really keeping to that, so they changed city ordinance um, in a couple different ways. Zoning, they made zoning spots for bicycles um, so that um, anybody in, couldn't just come in and place kiosks wherever they wanted. They had designated spots in the zoning for those. And they are trying to limit it to one company in Revere. The other thing they did was they added fines um, to the company. If they're not picked up within 24 hours, the DPW would pick those bikes up and charge the company a $25 fee uh, to return them. They did write several fines. They were paid and they said the problem alleviated itself. Um, so there's, there's other things that we need to look at um, once we get to this, but I do like the OFO idea. I know obviously you guys do this for a living and you know, whichever way you want to go, I just think it's, it's something that we should try to implement for the spring um, if it's not too soon to, uh, to try to, to get a test model out there. But if anybody else has any questions, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turco. Uh, any other councillors? Councillor Rosignol, please. Uh, th through you to either Mr. Bellavant or to John, through your um, investigation in either Zagster or OFO, is there a minimum amount of bikes that we would have to purchase or rent out for either organization? And roughly how much are we looking at as far as a fee on the city's budget? Um, I'm meeting with Zagster on Wednesday to discuss the costs and the implementation, how it gets done within the, a community. Uh, I did a feasibility survey with Zagster just the other day. Um, I'm waiting for those results, so I hope to have those uh, in a cup in about a week. They say. Um, I also have a. I pulled this right off of the website. If you'd like, I could pass it around. You can look at it. It's just Zagster. There are a bunch of different companies out there. Um, it's just the only one that I kind of knew. Um, I've seen the OFO bikes. I live in East Boston. They're in East Boston as well. Um, I didn't know it was called OFO, um, <laughs> so that was something I learned. One of the things um, we found from Zagster is that you can go from town to town mm -hmm. um, instead of just within your borders. Uh, we were originally thought you couldn't leave the city of Salem. That's not necessarily true. Uh, we found out you can go to Peabody. So in the feasibility study, one of the things you, we need to figure out is why we want to have bike shares. Um, they were asking, is it for recreational use? Is it for economic development? Is it to relieve congest um, congestion? Uh, there are multiple different things that were asked. Uh, so. I, asked, I answered them the best to my knowledge, um, and I think that we have a lot of recreational use, but the connecting to downtown, the connecting to the train, now that um, would be a fantastic um, opportunity. Also, connecting to the North Shore Mall, uh, connecting to Brooksby, connecting to the golf course, connecting to the bike paths. So there are a lot of different opportunities, but we have to figure narrow it down as to what is our purpose to have the bike shares. Sounds like, Councillor Turco, you want more of a recreation, but I think it could probably do a lot of, of both. So um, I'm interested to see what Zagster has to say. But I'll pass this Zagster flyer around. You can take a look at it. Yeah. And, and we also found out through the uh, MAPC that um, there's a cost associated, and Salem has sponsors. Oh, yeah. So I think it was Blue Cross, Blue Shield, yeah, uh, Salem yeah. State. So they would sponsor. I, I vaguely remember it was about $10,000 for a kiosk that they would set up. Um, and we'd ha we'll have to find that out and see if that's comparable to other, other businesses and other uh, companies out there as well. Councilor Turco, please. Thank you. And yes, Jen, that was my initial um, intent was recreational, but the more I looked into it and found that it was, it was actually being more widely used as transportation uh, these days, I, I agree. Um, to get to Salem from the downtown. And um, one of the biggest proponents in the Revere market was the Revere Police Department. And what they said to me was that um, they found that a lot of people that had fallen upon hard times or, in, uh, you know, uh, whether they had lost their job, their license, were widely using the bikes 
um, to get to the subway stations around Riviere, and that was the biggest pickup spot for the bikes. Um, their community development dep department told me that the bikes were pretty much used 24 hours a day, uh, the ones that they had there. If they had one um, thing that they could have added is, is addition, additional amounts to see if where their breaking point was, um, how many they needed. So, you know, it's, it was a huge success in Revere, and I think it would be a huge success here if we could do it. But thank you. Councilman McGinn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and um, thank you, Councilor Turco, for um, that background information about OFO. I had read an article about those bikes that have kind of the locking mechanism, um, and that was one of the biggest criticisms and complaints was that they were being left all over the place. So it's great to see that another community has figured out a way to to uh, deal with that. And so my question would be, as you, as uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, would be as you're doing your additional fact finding on this could we get that information from was it revere yes through you to from, council again not revere revere in terms of the steps they took with respect to zoning and and um, ordinances that address the biggest problem with this alternative method with the uh, because I, th I think that in some ways <clears throat> although it would be very desirable to kind of have the same system that uh, other communities have. I think that part of the reason Zags is probably trying to narrow down whether you want it for specific purposes because that they want to know where to place their hubs. And I don't think with this model where the bikes can go anywhere, um, you don't have that limitation. You don't have to anticipate what, you know, is it community development, is it recreation, whatever. It's, it's whatever people want to use them for. And, and they can leave them whenever they want to leave them. And if and then there's controls in place for those to get picked up so they don't become uh, a hazard. So um, I, you know, it seems like this, things are moving in the direction of that locking hub uh, method that, that Councilor Turco I referred to. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. Any other questions of Councilors? Is it okay if we, um, do you think you need a month to gather some information? Can we, at some point in March, schedule you for a follow-up and you can inform us? Is that okay, Councilor Turco? Yes, in the form of a motion, if um, we could leave this in committee and um, schedule it for a, a month out and have uh, Kurt and Jen back to discuss any findings, I'd be willing to do that. All in favor, any opposed, that's a vote. Thank you, Ms. Davis and Mr. Bellavance. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next up on the agenda is banners, A-frames, and other forms of advertisement. Councilor Sasslaw, this came from a motion uh, by you recently, and I think um, Commissioner Tallarico is here to help us through this. Welcome, Commissioner. If you can, uh, Commissioner. Al Tallarico, Building Commissioner. Councilor Sasslaw, would you like to take it? Sure, thank you, Councilor Gould. Um, so pr primarily, um, the reason why I brought this forward was um, just to get a little bit of a handle on, there's a lot of banners in the city, and um, I, I for one, one am for advertising, but what I see happening time and time again is these people put up these nice banners, and then after <laughs> time goes on, um, they don't replace them, and they become basically pollution. Uh, and they're just not attractive. I don't think it's what we want. Um, the, price, the places I see them most popular, at, um, you know, donut shops, um, subway shops, used car lots, auto repairs. So, um, and it's really, come, it's really come very popular, as I said, in the last three to four years. So it's something I, I have reached out to uh, Commissioner Tallarico. I wanna hear what he has to say. The, 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 a, the other issue is the A-frames. The A-frames, um, I know we have some stuff on the books. Um, if you actually look at the ordinances on the books, basically it says that they can't be out for greater than 30 days and they can't have them for longer than, they can't do it more than six times in a year. So basically we're giving them an A-frame if they want for six months out of the year. Um, once again, I'm not really looking to, to limit um, businesses from advertising and for trying to generate traffic. I'm just trying to look um, across the city at, the, at taking down 
uh, A-frames or banners or things that just aren't being uh, kept up. In some communities, they don't even allow the banners at all. Um, they just, just, just um, outright don't allow them. Um, I, I, I um, you know, I'm, I'm open to any uh, dialogue my other councils might have. I, I am definitely open to that. I, I don't, uh, I actually, you know, would favor that. The A-frames, as I said, I'm really um, not that concerned, not much about, but I am, I do hear a lot of uh, talk out there. I, I know other council have talked about it over the years, so I just figured I'd bring it forward. And also, uh, I know there's also enforcement issues, and I know uh, Commissioner Tellerigo will touch upon that. So at this time, I'm just gonna turn it over to Commissioner. Commissioner, could you help us there, please? Sure, uh, I wanna concede to the fact that there is a lot of A-frame signs, a lot of banner signs, um, um, and enforcement has um, been laxing on our end, primarily due to the, the amount of volume that we've been doing in the city as far as permitting and uh, other inspections that we're doing. It's kind of, it's been lax a little bit, and um, hopefully with uh, the addition of a new enforcement officer that, that you know, we can alleviate that, uh, that, uh, that problem. Um, I'm hoping, you know, more or less, I, I, these A-frame signs, as long as they're, as long as they're not uh, impeding on uh, foot traffic, and they're, you know, and they're there for 30 days, and um, and it's, uh, they, they, you know, and and they're not, um, uh, and they're coming in with, with their permits. Um, there really isn't anything that you know that we can do, and there is between the districts. Some districts allow for six repetitive permits. Some uh, allow for four repetitive permits. Uh, as far as how, how far you can go or how long you can have these uh, signs on. Um, uh, you know, we, we, we try to do our best with these. Um, you know, we, we, uh, one thing that we do do now, uh, we do eliminate those grass signs uh, throughout the city. We've collected hundreds of those signs throughout the year and, and you know, we've contacted all the people on those, um, uh, uh, part of those businesses to try to explain to them and educate them that, that you know, it's not allowed. Um, so we do need to take a pro proactive. Commissioner, uh, if I can, you, can you be specific? You're talking about the the metal those, metal yeah, those, frames. Okay. The metal frame signs. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we are trying to be proactive. Right now, we're just being re reactionary. As far as someone complains, we take a look. Um, if there's you know if there's an issue there, we try to work with the uh, owner of the business, try to educate them, and hopefully with the new person that we're um, going to be hiring, primarily that's that's what I want to do is more or less try to educate the public as far as what we do allow, what we can allow, um, and uh, and and work with them um, uh, to have a full time person or to have even a person part time that we're doing right now is going to. It's going to dramatically change, um, uh, you know, the, the number of signs that are out there. I think, um, as you brought up, um, it just actually got posted today, I believe. Um, I failed to mention, but the, the enforcement code uh, officer, I think that's a, a big, big issue, and that, that'll help out um, Al and his staff immensely. Um, let me ask you this, Commissioner. Are you opposed to a ban on the, the, the flags that are plunge in the ground and they just set and they flap? I mean, there's the, the, the primary, uh, you know, uh, businesses that use those are like Subways, McDonald's. Um, there's a lot of car dealerships that are using that. I really don't, I mean, if it's allowed and you guys in, in the city is, is, is fine with it, I don't have an issue with it. But they, they are more or less a nuisance and they do take up a lot of, you know, uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, it's an eyesore, I guess. If I, you know, but either way is is is, you know, as long as the city's appro you know approves that, uh, there's really nothing I can do about it. And that falls under the temporary uses as far as a frames, banners, and flags. Um. Um, I'm glad to hear that because, as I said, I think that's the one one that really uh, gets me. I think as far as the A-frames and things like that, with the new position that's gonna be created, I, I see um, a situation where um, if uh, some, one of the councils happens to drive by, they see an A-frame, it's gone up. I mean, I don't, do you, let me ask you this. What percentage do you say come down to your office and do the paper and to get the A-frame properly? Very small percentage, and, very and, small. 
downtown area like uh, Main Street and Foster Street, we've you know because we're around the area so much, um, we we can we can kind of address those those uh, people um, those business owners around that area. But in other parts of the city, um, you know, we just sometimes we just go by there. We don't we don't realize. And and some of my guys, I mean. You know, the, I, from my understanding, there was a committee that, that kind of oversaw uh, the signage in the city at one time. Um, you know, they've, they've got inspections to go to. Uh, by the time they got back, figure out if there was a permit for the sign. I mean, it's just, it's, it's pretty extensive as far as, you know, uh, the amount of time that we have to spend on them. That doesn't surprise me. What, what I think in a, in a perfect world what would happen is the new enforcement code officer, he has a cell phone. Um, if a wood council drives by, they see A-frame go up, um, there's nothing wrong with texting, knowing the fact that majority of the A-frames go up without the proper procedure, whether the business owner didn't know about it or didn't know how to do it, but you know, you, you text the enforcement officer, hey, there's one at um, you know, 22 Birch Street, can you please make sure that the, the owner knows about it and has done the proper paperwork? Because I do think we, we, do, is, we do get into a, a little bit of a wild, wild west situation when we don't have anything. And basically it's because, as you said, maybe we're reactionary, not proactive, so I'd like to see that change. But uh, at this point, I'd, I'd uh, like to just open up to any, any other council who'd like to comment. Thank you, Councillor Sasla. Uh, our esteemed clerk just uh, whispered in my ear that he th thinks it might be a good idea if when we issue a permit for a temporary sign or an A-frame, we give them a sticker that goes on that, and then we'll know as we drive by, we'll know that it's a legitimate permitted sign. It's a good idea, but as, as uh, right now, the, the sign, as far as A-frame signs, they're, supposed, uh, uh, they're required to put a date on that sign um, as far as the first time that they put that sign out. And that date will let us know more or less where the 30-day clock starts. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sharris, please. Thank you, through the Chair. Al, you were talking about um, when the inspectors go out to different businesses, and I know your, your department is taxed. It, it's, it's busy. Uh, by the time they go back to the uh, City Hall to check on the permits and things of like that, um, are your guys equipped with a, a laptop or a iPad or anything like that that they can check right there on site? They do, they, they do uh, have a, um, a mobile device that they can check, but again, they're you know, on the road, they're going to inspections, they would have to pull over, take a look. Um, it probably would be easier just to call the office or when they get back to the office instead of doing that. When they're on, you know, when they're on inspections, those devices are more or less there to kind of go through some checklists, take some pictures, and kind of document that. And as far as the um, um, it's, it's, it, and it's kind of not shoddy, but it, it, the connections and, 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 and things like, like that, it could, they could be sitting there for, you know, five minutes trying to, trying to connect to the system. Thank you, Councillor Sharris. Any other councillors? Councillor Turco, please. Al, yeah, just a quick question, because I, I couldn't find it addressed. There's, there's one location, very good business in Ward 1, I have no problem with the business at all. But coincidentally, right when Councilor Sassler filed this motion uh, to send this to committee, I had gotten an email, and it was in regards to um, a large banner in front of the business that was in the, uh, the five-gallon buckets with cement. And it just, you know, it, it, it looks tacky. And, you know, and I did talk to the business owner, and he did wrap it up, and um, I haven't seen it up since. But, you know, is there any, anything in our... Uh, Zoning that your ordinance that you know of that well something like that wouldn't be allowed um, as far as a banner it would have to be attached to the wall or um, I guess it could be attached to like some sort of stairway with with uh, with uh, you know rails or something like that but it, it would still need to meet the the dimensional requirements for a wall sign um, uh, you know d different districts have uh, different calculations but uh, typically it's it's um, uh, for a wall sign, let's say in the BR district, it's probably 60 f uh, square feet maximum, 10% of the facade. Um, but again, they would need a permit for that. Um, and again, going back to reactionary, you would call me, I would send a guy out there, and uh, we, we kind of educate the, the owner and you know, take it down or have him pull a permit. Right, and, th and thank you for that. And, and just you know, in the interest of uh, saying it, um, I, I agree with you. I don't, I've never thought building inspectors should be out 
chasing signs and, and, and I see the, the amount of construction in Peabody and um, you know, I know you have a limited staff, so I think that's where the idea came from for the code enforcement officer, and I, I, I genuinely hope it, it helps alleviate some of the smaller issues throughout the city, but thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turco. Any other councillors? Councillor Sasla, please. Just, just one question, Commissioner. If we, if we go down the, the road of where we're gonna um, do away with, with the, uh, the banners, I, I actually, uh, I'm a little bit, concerned about the word we use because sometimes when you think of a banner, we can have a banner downtown Peabody uh, going across your telephone poles uh, highlighting the International Festival. So I'm thinking of the ones that are in the ground. I don't know what is the proper terminology to use that, uh, but it's something that you know I, I, I want to make sure that we do it correctly because I'm not looking to do away with those banners. I'm looking to do away with the poles in the ground. I, I would consider those flags. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and the banners if, that would be affixed to some sort of wall or a structure or something like that. And then as far as um, if, if we do away with banners in, in the city, is that something where um, you know, obviously we make an ordinance um, just like Council Turco t talked about the two, the sign in the two five gallon buckets, basically you just put it on the books and then if it's, if there's, if it's there, um, I know you talked about in the past, sometimes you have to give people 14 days notice, but in this situation, if it's just not allowed, the enforcement code officer would ask the business to, you know, please take it down immediately, I assume? I, I, I think I sent you some information regarding the, the ordinance, but after uh, a closer review of the, uh, this section, uh, this is a pretty large section, uh. <laughs> pretty big. So the section does have an enforcement area where if it's a temporary sign, they don't have a permit for that sign, we're actually, we can, we can issue a ticket right then and there. If it's, um, uh, a sign that's, uh, you know, it's not a temporary sign, then we have to give them seven day notice to correct. So it's not the 14. But we do have that mechanism in place right now uh, to address it as far as enforcement, uh, right? You know, we can write a ticket right then and there. So uh, I'm not a member of the committee. Um, I don't know if a member wants to make a motion. Um, uh, off, you know, if they, if they want a further discussion, but I'd be open to a motion um, to do away with the, we said, uh, you said not flags, you, you know. I'm not sure how to even, I mean, they're flags and they're those, you know, those half I, flags, I guess. If I had Googled it, I know I would have been, there would have been a terminology that you go to the business that sell them, they use the proper terminology. Um, I think it's a, it's basically a, it's basically a pole flag, what it really is. It's not a banner flag, it's a pole flag. Uh, but we can maybe look into that. Um, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I'd like to just see if, you know, my other counselors uh, feel the same way I do, because I think, as I said, I think it's just gonna um, just clean things up. And especially, as I said, uh, it's people who just keep them out there for a period of time and also, uh, problem with the, with the used car lots, which uh, as many people have talked about is trying to just kind of bring those up to code and make them look a little better across the city. I think this is just the first step with the used car lots myself. Thank you, Councilor Sassla. This is actually a zoning amendment. It would have to amend the zoning uh, so it would take more than just a motion. We could discuss it at a, at a future meeting, put it on the agenda to discuss that. Um, any other comments, Councillors? Councillor Rosignol, please. Thank you. Through you to Councillor Sasla. Where we haven't had an enforcement officer, do you think once that position is up and running and is a little bit more accountable to what we currently have, that may alleviate some of the concerns that you have regarding signage? Should we wait until that position is filled, they're up and running, and eliminating some of the signs that I agree with you are a, a nuisance at this point, um, and see if that alleviates the concern. And if not, then we can always look to amend uh, our zoning ordinance um, as you see fit. If I, if I may for one second, uh, Commissioner, do you have enough bite as it is to eliminate those pole banners? I, I, think, they I think I do, and, and the reason why technically you can't consider them a flag or a banner. There's really nothing in there that categorizes that type of signage. At least I haven't seen it. Um, I know they're fairly new, maybe 
five, ten years old. Um, you know, in my past position in, at, at uh, the other municipality I worked for, we didn't, we, we took those down all the time. Uh, we didn't allow for A-frame a signs either. Uh, but I, I think I have enough uh, in our ordinances to kind of address those concerns. Uh, uh, Commissioner, they're probably not legal as is anyway. They're, they're not. They're not permitted. You they're not issue. permitted. Okay. So to Councillor Rosignol's point, you want to? Uh, we'll readdress this in a couple months after things get moving on the uh, code enforcement officer yeah, position. I, I think that's a good idea. The only thing I would say, Council, is the fact that um, I just think it's it's not an issue of um, uh, the issue is the fact that, that they go up and um, they just never come down. You know, and, 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 and they just don't look good. And so I think it's, that's the reason why I'd like to just see them gone. Commissioner, will you um, come out of here saying to your code enforcement person that the council wishes that we clean up these? I, I can start addressing that um, um, more or less immediately, even without the position being filled. I can, like we did with the, um, the grass signs. The lawn signs. We can start targeting certain areas. I mean, we did do it in downtown two years ago. I took it upon myself to, with all of my guys. We walked down uh, Main Street, more or less went to every business, educated them on what they could and couldn't do. Um, it did work for a while. I mean, it's just one of those things that you just have to keep with. Um, uh, but I, 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 you know, if, down, if Route 1 is a, is a concern right now, we can certainly target that area. I can send a couple of guys just to go through every business um, and, and kind of, you know, uh, go through and tell them that they can't have those signs or those banners or <laughs> the flags. <laughs> Councilor Sassler. Thank you. And, and I appreciate that. The, 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 the big thing I don't want to do, Commissioner, is I know in some of the communications we had, you talked about... Um, you know, one business said, well, they have it, so why can't we have it? So I don't want to do that to you. I appreciate that. But that's why I think at some point we had to just maybe put it on the books and we get the proper terminology to just do away with the signs forever. Because if you take the, the, the signs away from the car dealers on Route 1 and someone has it on, say, Walnut Street, you know, they're going to point that out, and I don't want to put you in that predicament. So I think it's a start. But I think hopefully down at the end of the road we probably need to get some verbiage in there to, to protect, you know, protect your department once and for all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor. Can I have a motion from a member, please, uh, Councillor Turco, that we'll keep this in committee and readdress it after the code enforcement? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to leave the issue of banners, A-frame signs, and other forms of advertisement in committee um, for two months. Um, Thank you, Councillor. You heard the motion. Anybody all in favor? Anybody opposed? It's a vote. Thank you, Commissioner, very much. Appreciate it. And now the most talked about topic in the city. And with the infamous Mr. Peter Gamash, please come to the podium. Welcome, Welcome, Mr. Gamash. Thank you for being here. I think everyone knows you and knows what role you play. Could you please, uh, for the record, who you are, your address, please? Uh, Peter Gamash, General Manager, JRM. Live at, reside at 23 Greenwood Road, Peabody. Thank you. As, as you well know, um, over the years, recycling and trash, but specifically recycling is the topic, has changed and it's ever changing. And can you give us, if you would please educate us, can you give us what currently um, JRM does for the city of Peabody for recycling and where the future might go, not necessarily uh, what you envision us or how you think we can get better at recycling and how we can educate the general public because they're watching on TV, uh, the newspapers are here and things will get written about um, positively. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Um, we service the city of Peabody for the trash and recycling pickups. We, we uh, pick up 18 municipalities in Massachusetts and Southern New Hampshire, <coughs> excuse me, we just built a multi-million dollar facil recycling facility up on Route 1. I'm sure all of you people have seen it, if not have visited it, um, called Greenworks, where we process all the recycled materials that we pick up curbside. Tell us what, um, how, how you pick them up and sort them and what can go and cannot go in trash, in recycling today. Um, 
plastics, paper, cardboard, tin, aluminum, glass can go. What cannot go are some of the rigid plastics, be um, a toy box or something large, and it's called rigid plastics. Um, we don't take styrofoam, which is a huge contamination factor for, for the recycling, and we also, as everybody knows, can no longer pick up recycling in plastic bags. That became an issue recently. Um, it brought to the forefront there were people left their recycling bins out with a plastic bag on top of it or around it, and they refused. JRM did not pick up any of the recycling, correct? Well, at first they, they targeted just the bags. They were supposed to, they were supposed to just tag the bag and take whatever was recycling outside of the bag. Um, as everybody knows, it was a real issue at the beginning, but uh, it's been going now for almost a month, three weeks to a month, and it's, it's gotten to you know, 80 to 90 percent um, better, much better. Uh, what size are the current recycling bins that we have? The in? curbside setouts are 18 gallon bins, which were given out, you know, back in the, in the 90s, early 2000s. They have not been um, replaced, um, and they're still standard today. Um, and ideally, would, would like <laughs> probably a larger bin with a cover. And it, those, are, those are made, you and I had a discussion earlier, they're 24 gallon? They have some of the smaller units are 20 gallon, 24 gallon, up to 24 gallons. Um, if you visited a city as, you know, uh, Lynn or Medford, they have a different type of program, single stream program, where they give you big toters that they put all the, mix all the recycling in. It's called single stream. Um, there are some serious issues with the single stream recycling as it is today. Uh, we could get into that. I'm sure we're all pressed for time. I could talk for hours on that, but uh, I do have some brochures on what's happening with the with the global markets, and you know the process of of what's actually labeled recycle, which isn't exactly recycling. Um, and I could go on for a long time with those with those issues, but uh, so right now sticking to the to, to the city's issues, you know, you got the 18 gallon bins. I understand that people are looking to get their their bins covered to eliminate the, the trash, the, um, the recycling from blowing around. Um, that's an issue, not alone with PEB, it's with everybody. Um, you're looking to come up with some type of uniform bin that can be given or dispersed to every resident in the city. It's very costly, and I, I apologize, I don't have any numbers, I can research it for you. Um, what I usually tell people now is to put your material out in a regular barrel with a cover on it and just get a recycle sticker and put it on that barrel so we can identify that it's recycling and we, we pick it up that way. The problem with that is a lot of folks keep their recycling bin inside the house mm -hmm. and then bring it out come trash day. Um, what do you do, what, what success do you have that, that, or what's a good example of recycling within the 18 communities that works as opposed to what we have in Peabody. Not that it doesn't work, but are there, are there better models? All my municipalities, we do not have any, any um, large barrel totas as, as some of the other single stream communities. We do single stream in some communities, we do uh, dual stream in another. Um, we, do not, we, we do not impose any type of barrel regulations. If you put a barrel out with a recycle sticker on it, we will pick it up. So we don't, in, it, people still put it out in boxes. They put it out in milk crates. As long as it's away from your, your trash barrels and we can identify it as recycling, we'll pick it up that way. Was there any proposal in the last contract uh, negotiations about changing to a different recycle bin? It's been kicked around with every municipality that we deal with, but when you come down to the expense and the, uh, the upgrading of the equipment to pick it up, it's, it's always a, a lot more expensive to the municipality and to the contractor to, to do it that way. What does a 24 gallon bin cost, ballpark? Yeah, yeah, you know, ballpark. I, haven't I haven't really looked into it. It's probably it might be as much as $15. 
And how many households are there in the city? It's probably close. We were just trying to find that out. I'm, I'm going to estimate this probably. How many? Tim, Tim is saying 22,000. Yeah, that's, I, I, I'm not sure. If, if Tim's got that number, he's better off than I am. Mm -hmm. That includes condos. Yeah, so that, I, I, don't, I think we service probably, it's probably, yeah, it's 17 or 18,000. You're looking at a couple hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, to, 300, 300 mm -hmm. thou to mm -hmm. retro. Would a 24 gallon tote work? The no, that's, that's probably too small. And, and again, you know, you're going to have to check the quality of, of the, the total that you're looking to buy. Most of them have the hinged cover. Yeah. So in the cold weather, especially up in the Northeast, they'll snap, they'll get brittle, they'll break. And then you have replacement costs yeah. and who's going to pay for it. And, and, you know, there are a lot of fine line issues that need to be, you know, looked at as far as making an investment of, you know, a quarter million dollars. I have more questions, but I'll open up to my fellow councillors. Anybody? Councillor Rosignol, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if we were to port purchase stickers for every resident and then distribute the stickers to every resident and they could apply it to their own barrel, that would be serviceable to the contract, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Gravel, please. Is, uh, is JRM a not-for-profit organization? No. Oh, oh, they make money. We try to. So that's they, the goal. When, so, uh, so when, that's so the goal, they, Dave. So, when, they, so when, the, when, the, uh, when the resident puts the recycling in the right bin, it's reducing some of the labor associated with your collection. And the collection, you, do you resell the, the, the recyclables? Oh, yeah. We, we market the recyclables, yes. So why wouldn't it be in your interest to provide the, the container that allows the resident to properly dispose of the recyclables so that you can make money on it? Well, we're going to... We're gonna You're looking at the one side of the equation. You're talking about I, I, like I, it's I, a cost. I, I'm, 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 I'm I, saying it's, it's, it's almost an investment, isn't it? it? It is an investment. But again, I could tell people to go out and buy a $20 trash barrel with a cover on it and put a, you know, a dollar sticker on that barrel. Instead of going out and spending three hundred fifty or three hundred thousand dollars to incorporate every household to have the same bin, but it, it's a cost that you know. Are we going to pay for that, or is the city going to pay for that, or are we going to mutually oh, I, work with that? I'm just I'm just throwing it out I, there. I, I think you're, you're the ones who sold the contract, right? You're, and you make money on the contract Correct. on the pickup. Correct. And you're making money on the content of the pickup. We were, yes. So it, it would seem to me that you know, uh, providing a bin that is usable and actually more usable than the current bins. I mean, the current bins, you're right, you invested years ago in the current bins. Uh, why wouldn't you take one with a cover and, and you know, help the, the citizens out? I just don't understand. You're talking about increasing by six gallons of total. And for, to, we're getting the recycled material the way it is now. I think that Council Gould was was looking to eliminate the the blow around and the in the litter factor. Um, we're still getting the recycling. We have a lot of people who put barrels out with the sticker on the barrel. So I mean, a three hundred thousand dollar investment. Are you ever going to recruit that? Accrue that? And then you have people that you're going to invest. Well, I don't the, know, Peter. I, I look at three hundred thousand dollars, and you just said the last time we got bins was. 10 or 15 years ago, mm -hmm. if you amortize that over 15 years, it doesn't seem like a significant amount of investment for JRM. I mean, it's a one-time cash hit, but it's not, it's not over the haul. They're still using the same bins. Those bins are still durable. They're still using the same bins. I, I understand, but if you bought new ones, the same 15 years is probably going to apply. I'm just saying it, it, it would be a great service for you to provide to the city, I would think, but that's just... Just my two cents. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Turco, please. Mr. Chairman, um, through you to uh, Mr. Gmash. I'm, I'm tr having trouble deciphering, and I, I think Councillor Saslow was in the same situation uh, with some residents a few weeks back, with the single stream and the dual stream. I mean, you say Lynn is a single stream, and they placed everything in the same barrel, but isn't that the same as what we do? No. But yet we call it dual because... It's, it's, it's sort separated. You're supposed to have your paper to get in one, one compartment and the 
um, other material in another. The problem with the single stream recycling program is the contamination factor. Right now you have an 18 gallon bin curbside. You can eliminate the contamination level at the curb. If you're taking an 18, uh, they come 64 gallons or 96 gallons with the city of Atlanta, the single stream program, you're dumping that. People are just putting everything, diapers, trash, the hauler, the, the, the end market where we are right now has probably a 15 to 20 percent contamination rate over some of the municipalities that we're picking up single stream. That is the problem that is affecting every manufacturer in the United States. I got some literature from, from uh, the markets. It's a global problem right now, China driven. 60 percent of the United States exports go to China. China has pretty much closed their doors as far as importing from the United States their recyclable materials. There are no markets. The, the, the recycling markets are, are flat right now. And where it's going to go, it's always cyclical, it always comes back, but right now it has been flat for so long, people are getting really, really nervous as to what the recycling is going to, what's going to happen to the markets. And you know, we spent $15 million on a facility up, up on Route 1, and yes, Dave, we do make money. And as you may or may not know, it's all market driven. You know, and eventually you cannot sustain a flat market for recycling and not make money. I mean, it's, it's, it's out there. I'm sure everybody's heard about the problems we're having, and they're real. And I'm just here to tell you that it's, it's, it's scary right now. We're in a tough situation. Thank you. Um Back to the uh, the covered recycled bins. I, I understand the cost, and um, honestly, when I first made this motion to send this to committee, I was nervous about how we would roll that out and what the costs could potentially be to the city, if any. And hearing Councilor Gravel speak, um, I just wonder if there's a better way that we can work together with JRM uh, to try to roll this out. I mean, you said yourself it's it's been rough, roughly 15 years. Since um, I think we might have bought it. It's, yeah, it's been probably 15 years. Yeah, I think I've, I, I've, we, I've had the same bin since I've been in Peabody. Mm -hmm. so I think and I've still got the same bin. And, yeah. and getting back, we've worked with the city of Peabody, and I've been involved with the city contract since 1995. So I've been around in the companies I worked with before that from 1985. So I've seen every change and every, every type of program that's, that's come along in the last you know, 25 to 30 years. I've been around. I've been a part of it. Um, it continues to change, and as we go further out, you know, you can look to, there's a million different ways to reduce, reuse, and recycle, and we just need to, you know, every municipal contract that I deal with are all different. They're all unique. They're all catered around what the city wants. I'm employed by the city. We work for the city. If the city tells us to pick something up, we'll pick it up. If they tell us not to, we won't. So it's, it's uniquely done through a bidding process uh, and a negotiation process. Right, I agree. And, and you guys, if I read that correctly, you have ten, another nine years on this contract? Yeah, nine or ten years. <clears throat> excuse me, nine or ten years left. Right. I mean, the issue is, and, and I was actually talking to Council Gravel at this at an event, about this at an event the other day, is we're all aware there's a problem. Um, we all wake up on trash day or come home from work on trash day and we see the trash up and down the streets. Mm -hmm. Um, that's through no fault of yours. It's the size of the bins. It's the fact that we've all changed the bottled water um, in the last five to ten years. I think bottled water is through the roof, and those those little chintzy bottles get thrown on top of there, and they blow out, and they're all over the place. Um, so we need to address it. Um, how we do that, I guess it's not entirely our problem, but I, I think as our trash um, collection agency, I, I think maybe. Um, if you had some ideas on how we could better do this without you having to upgrade your system on the, on the vehicles, um, you wouldn't have to do any upgrades for a 24-gallon? No. No. And if that's the largest one you could go to? I'd have to research. There's, there's different styles, different um, costs, different makers. Uh, you'd have to research that to find out you know, whether, what kind of type of plastic they're made of, how sturdy they are, how durable they are. You know, and then you, if you roll out a program that every household gets one, 
you know, are the lids durable enough to handle the, the, the cold, the breaking, picking them up, putting them down. I mean, there's a lot of different things you have to, you have to go through. And then a replacement cost. Who's going to be responsible to replace something? There's a, there's a lot of different things that you need to sit down and, and, and work out over, you know, a negotiation. Right. Is that something you'd be willing to do? Um, maybe pro provide the council an estimate um, as to what it would cost to provide those 24-gallon bins. Yeah, I, I, um, I could do that research. I yeah, I, I think we have some some numbers. We all have different numbers on how many households are actually in PBD right now and and what the exact cost of these bins are. So to actually have it in front of us and see if it's it's feasible um, for us both to work together, um, I, I think it'd be a first step anyway. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turco. Councillor Sasslaw, then Councillor Gravel, then Councillor McGinn. Please. Thank you. Um, I like to see the direction we're going here because really what it comes down to, and I think you know this, Peter, is the, the worst thing is for the, for the residents, they, they're, just, they're just upset. They're upset. I get calls about, you know, trash blowing around. It's starting to look horrible in the neighborhoods. And then the last thing that we all want to see happen is people to say, you know what? I'm not doing it anymore. And we don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. We've come too far to go back. So I appreciate the dialogue you just had with uh, Council Turco. I, I know for a fact in Beverly, um, you know, when they had the, the barrels that, you know, they, they put them at the old McDonald's for years and years. They stored them there. If you're a resident, you went down, you picked them up. But I understand there's a cost involved, but we, we've got to figure it out where maybe you get one at a, at a discount rate, whatever it is, and then if it breaks or whatever, you're on your own. I mean, some people um, didn't wait in my neighborhood. They went out, they purchased the barrel, they put the lid, they put the sticker on, and so on. So I, I just have to go back to this because it's a big issue. The press is here, and I, and I just got to resolve it once and for all. The single stream and double stream. This is a very confusing sticker. It says mixed recycling. Mm -hmm. So I know... I put my paper, my pizza boxes in one barrel, I put my cans and my bottles in another barrel. Sometimes I might get a pizza box in there, especially after last weekend. But what does this mean? Because that's, that's where the, that, some of the confusion runs in. We also have the paper only recycled stickers. You've but, only got, but this you've is only one got that we one. are giving out. So that's what, correct. So, so does this mean single stream, dual stream? What, what does this mean? to the consumer who picks it up, to the resident who picks it up, what does that mean to them? What that means they, they can put their bottles, their cans, their plastics in a barrel with that sticker on it. And the other sticker is for paper, cardboard only. Okay. So there are two different barrels or two different ways to put it out. If you're going to put it in a closed bin so that when my driver's driving by, he's actually looking for a bin. So he's looking for the bin. So if there's the newspapers on top in a bag, he just picks it up in a paper bag or tied up. He just takes it and puts it in one side and then, and then the rest of it's commingled. So that sticker is for um, a barrel of, of um, plastics, um, glass, tin, aluminum. Okay, that helps. I appreciate that because it yep. was a little bit confusing. Thank and you. And we do have those stickers available to, to uh, hand out. They have them at the mayor's office. They have them at the... Uh, uh, Forest Street. Yep. Yeah. City Clerk's Office, yep. City Clerk's Office, yes. Councilor Sassler. Councilor Gravel, please. No? Yes? I love talking to Peter. He was actually a pretty good ball player one Something time. Something up there. <laughs> he used to coach me. <laughs> That's how old I am, Tom. <laughs> well, I'll never be that old day. <laughs> What about an idea in terms of, uh, instead of uh, you know, just looking for JRM to do it, if I go to a Home Depot and I buy the barrel, right? Mm -hmm. I'm buying one and I'm not gonna get any real deal, right? Mm -hmm. What if JRM were to, to you know, have pre-order, people pre-order from them these barrels? I bet you if they're buying a couple of thousand of them, they're gonna buy them a lot cheaper and a lot better than I'm gonna buy one yeah, and, and if you're buying, you know, bulk, you're obviously going to get a good deal. Right. So instead of you having to foot the whole bill, I'm sure there's a number of residents, myself included, who would be happy to buy a recycled barrel from JRM that has a cover on it and would probably get a much better deal buying them from JRM than I would get from Home Depot, and I wouldn't have to put a sticker on them because they'd already be... I think, you know, if they were ordered in bulk, they could be ordered with the Peabody logo just like the current uh, recycle bins are. And as the city could, could look into buying bulk also and get, and get the same type of rate. I mean, we're going to get 
we, the city would probably do better off than we could if you're buying bulk. Just an idea. Maybe yeah, it's, some, it's a, it's maybe a good idea, and it's, 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 been, it's been brought up before. And like I say, the, the municipality could probably get a better rate than, than um, JRM could. Councilor Gravel, if I, if I understand you, you're talking about a barrel, though. You're not talking about the bin that we currently use. No, Some I'm talking people about do a barrel. use barrels, barrels. I'm talking about a barrel. Okay. But the fact that, you know, if, if somebody were buying those in bulk, and you could go to the municipal building and pick up and pay for one of those barrels, you could say, well, I want two because, frankly, I want to separate. I don't want to put my everything together and leave it up to them. It's more cost. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, uh, and if they were at a reasonable rate, uh, you know, a lot of times people, if you go to Home Depot, you buy one, you're going to pay the highest amount. But if the city would have buy them or JRM would have buy them and you buy them from one source, they might be buying 2,000 of them. The price is going to be a lot cheaper. And they can pass on that savings to, to the residents who want to buy. Some residents won't want to buy. Some residents can't afford. I get it. But it, at least it's an alternative to know. Thank you, Councilor Gravel. Um, that doesn't address, though, the purchasing of new bins if we decide to go that route. No, we'd have to, we'd have to sit down and discuss that. Correct. Yeah. And, and I, I, like I say, I'm going to have to do some research on some yep. pricing and, and, yep. and bring some samples in and, and, you know, have it looked at. Okay. Councilor McGinn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, a number of councillors have come back to this question about single stream versus two stream. I'm going to do the same thing, and I apologize if we're covering the same ground here, but I get confused myself. I, I, we put out very little trash. We, uh, my, the bins that were provided years ago, ours got smashed a long time ago. We got barrels. We labeled them. We separate uh, paper from all other recyclables, and we put out a lot of recycling and very little trash in those in those barrels. And then when they come and collect it, they throw it all in the same place in the truck. And I've had other residents contact me and say they've observed exactly the same behavior. And I've actually talked to the people that pick it up in front of my house and mm -hmm. asked them why they do that. And they say, well, we have people that sort that out. So are, are we going through this separation for no particular purpose or, no, is, it, or no. is that an issue they're, with they're the collectors? To, they're or they're, they're split body trucks and they're supposed to be separated at the curb. We, I've, dealt, I've spoken with a couple of counselors who have had the same issue. I've tried to talk to my, my crew. Um, again, it goes back to we don't want to deceive the public. Um, we're picking it up. We're eliminating the contamination source at the curb. So if you've got a small bin, we'll eliminate that source at the curb. So. We've got split body trucks. Why they're throwing everything into one side is beyond me, but uh, you know, that's something that we have monthly meetings with. Try to beat these guys up. Um, getting back to, um, you know, with your issue, with, with you seeing them throwing in the same truck, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I can't follow them around all day long and if they're doing that. But what I can tell you is that every recycle material, all the recycled material that's getting picked up, excuse me, is getting recycled. Okay, so it's fair to me to tell residents when they ask me that it truly is a dual stream and they should Correct. continue to separate, and that's a JRM issue in terms of Correct. if they've got some breakdown in their process, they're, they're going to deal with that, Correct. right? Correct. So, so with respect to some of your answers to Councilor Gravel, I, I understand, I've read all the same articles everybody else has, I know the market's soft right now, and, but it seems like you say you're getting all the recycling. I don't think you're getting all the recycling. I think you're getting a fraction of it. I think you're, I think part of the limiting factor is that we're not encouraging people by putting out, providing larger containers. So, I mean, I, I, th I think it's almost like you're discouraging the collection. I, I gotta make because, something because perfect. I gotta make because, something because perfectly we're in clear. Because Nobody we're, is discouraging recycling. You're not. We need, no, absolutely because, not. Because I, we this spend, is cyclical, as you said. That's and, correct. And, and we're in a soft market right now. Correct. And we, this, the last thing we want to do is discourage recycling. Absolutely. Right? It, you don't want to discourage it because once somebody stops recycling, the chances of getting them back are very slim. Okay, so you said we want to encourage it. I agree. We should not limit our review to 24 gallon containers, we should look at just because that's the maybe the next easiest step, or we should look at the biggest containers we can. And, you know, like other communities have, 
And I, I understand that to do that requires some additional uh, retrofit to the trucks potentially to handle those, but I, I, you know, I think it sounds like that you're willing to look at that and we might be able to uh, cooperative, cooperatively determine where those costs might, might lie, whether that's with JRM or the city or the, or the homeowners or some combination thereof. Would that, would that be fair? That's more than fair. Okay. But I, I, I got to stress the fact that, you know, everything that gets picked up gets recycled. There is a the waste. There are materials that are being picked up now, even on dual stream, that get by. Um, the styrofoam is a, is a huge issue. The plastic bags were an issue. I think we got a handle on all the plastic bags. But, you know, whether it's it's, there are end markets. Not, right now, we are still moving our material. There's, it, uh, it has not changed. The only thing that's changed is the end markets and the pricing. We're not making as much money as we were because the markets are flat. It's always cyclical. It always comes back. It's whether you can maintain the downside until the upside gets there. Understood. But like all markets, and I, you just said it, it it's going to recover at some point. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, don't, I don't think that any analysis that we do now should be short-sighted based on a soft market Correct. It, should, it should correct it should contemplate that ultimately it's going to be worth your while to get as much recycling as possible mm -hmm. and that might require some investment to retrofit the trucks to handle larger containers and i think those containers to you know what originally brought this issue to us was a cover it's a mess out there i cringe when when it's trash day and there's and it's going to be windy or god forbid there's going to be a snowstorm or something it's 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 disgusting. Yep. There's, there's stuff everywhere, and a big contributor to that is these, un, you know, overflowing recycling bins. Mm -hmm. um, so the cover should be attached, like we see in other communities, and that's I think that's p one of the downsides of um, you know asking people to go out and get barrels because if you do that, you know, we're going to be chasing those lids around the yep. street as those blow around too. It you know the the larger the container, the more recycling an attached lid, something that can roll something that a truck can mechanically put up and down. You said it earlier in your comments that, um, you know, that those lids could break off or whatever. There's, so there's a the replacement cost. But if your truck is better equipped to handle that, it's less likely to have those types of mm -hmm. damage rather, you know, because the, the barrel's not being thrown around. That's my perspective on it from, from having seen how it happens in, in other adjacent communities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Four feet. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Councilor McGinn. Councilor Sharris, then Councilor O'Neill, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Peter, I, I, one of the things I have seen is, is, as we well as Councilor McGinn yeah. said, they throw it all in one. And so some of your con contamination that's happening could be your own people. Mm -hmm. So I would really have a serious talk with them because I've seen it personally. Yep. Um, a lot of times I see when they're taking the recycling to and they're dumping them into the containers, not all comes out of the barrel. So when they throw the barrel to the side, that stuff is coming out and it's posing a, the litter problem too. So again, I would stress to your, your men, I know they're trying to go quick, especially down yep. some roads, but um, some of this mess that's on the roads is just the way they're handling it. Okay? The other thing is that my, some of the constituents I've been talking to uh, and they've been hearing about these large barrels, the older uh, generation is saying, please don't get such a large barrel that I can't handle. As some of the councilors mentioned, some people actually keep their recycling in the house and they carry it out to the, the steps. Um, so if I understand the large containers, but if there was an option still, don't eliminate the option of the stickers that people can use in smaller barrels, because I do have constituents, the older generation, who may not have as much because it's only themselves or a, a spouse, but to have a large container that they have to bring out to the street is gonna be an issue for them too. So if, if you can keep in mind that not to eliminate the stickers yeah. if you went that route or have a smaller, bar smaller barrel too that they could to get. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Sharris. Councilor O'Neill, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you, I'd just like to comment that uh, this is all good about uh, some of the education about dual stream recycling and uh, just educating the, the, I guess, the residents. Well, one, one of my biggest concerns was the whole plastic bag issue. And I understand that, you know, f I guess for a few years, you folks have been picking up the bags, you know, kind of, mm -hmm. you didn't have to, but it was causing issues uh, with the operations of your, you know, recycling process. But my issue, and I think most people's immediate issue is just the communication was poor. 
it was a, a, a switch was flipped and then you know, the residents are like, what is this? And I just think that we need to be better on communication on those simple things. Let people know this is the process. We've been doing it for years. However, we can no longer do it. Here's the reason why. The communication roll out of it, in my opinion, was very, very poor. And, and a lot of residents um, called and, and just it gets back to people don't want to recycle when they start, in their opinions, getting hassled in their, in, you know, in, on the whole the, process. Yeah, you know, I'll agree 100 percent. The ball was dropped on the education process and what, when it was going to happen and where it was going to happen. And it was the miscommunication between, um, I, I'm not going to point fingers, but you're 100 percent correct. It could have been done better. It, it absolutely could have been um, gotten out there a lot sooner than it did. Um, so you're right. We need to do a better follow up with the uh, with the city council and the city on, on when we make changes. Hopefully it's the last change we'll make. You know, I mean, it was, and getting back to the plastic bags, it was, it was, it wasn't allow us to process the, the material as quickly as we needed to to get it off the floor. The bags were, were getting caught up on the machine. We'd have to shut the machines down. You know, you got 15 to 18 guys picking. You shut the machine down, they're standing around for half an hour while you're cutting the plastic bags out of the, 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 the belts. And um, you know those those wraps, those ties on the plastic bag were, the, were a bigger issue because you'd have to cut them. You'd have to get right in there and cut them. So um, I agree 100 percent that we could have done a better job on the um, on the education process. Thank you, Councilor O'Neill. Thank you. Any other councilors? If I could, um, Pete, can we look to have you come back in a couple months with some information about? Um, what we, how many households, what we could do to do a bulk purchase, as Councillor Gravel mentioned, and what the tiered recycle containers are. We use an 18, 24. Councillor McGinn made a great point. Mm -hmm. Is there a 36? Is there a I'll, get, I'll get prices and, and options on, on okay. everything that you, you need, that you might need. You guys can mull it over and see what you want to okay. do. Okay. Because the cost involved. With a the people that are going to have to make this happen. And as we move forward, change is difficult, but if you envision what it will be like after the change with some really significant improvement on our recycling, I think we're, we're going to hit a home run. And people want to do it. As Council McGinn said, and he's told me this before, he has very little trash. He has so much recycling because he's doing it right. I've got people who don't put out trash. Just Imagine recycling. That. So, I mean, it, it, I will check all the, uh, I'll get you some brochures. Okay. I'll look into pricing and, um, you know, you can take a look at it. And Thank I'll you. Invite me back in a month and it shouldn't take more than that. Councillor Turco, can I get a motion, please? Keep it in committee, please. Certainly, to uh, move to keep this in committee, uh, I'm going to say 30 days. Only You said that's good enough, Peter, 30 yeah, days? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I, I think that'd be great just so we don't drop the ball on this so we can kind of move. I think we all want to move on this as quick as we can. and. Uh, I'm sure the mayor will be happy to pay the bill. You heard the motion by Councillor Turco. All in favor, any opposers vote? Peter, I can't tell you how great it was having you here because it's informative. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you know, as a team, we're going to get there. We'll get there. Now, uh, like I said, it'll take, give me a couple of weeks. I'll send me a date. Okay. I'll come back and uh, have all your information. I'll, I'll speak with you before we meet. Thank you very we, much, Pete. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Peter. Thank you. Uh, no further business, anyone? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs>